Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is another example of finding the volume of the solid under the plane x minus 2y plus z equals 1 and above the region bounded by x plus y equals 1 and x squared plus y equals 1. This is going to be about 10 to 12 minutes video. The focus right here is practicing how to find the volume in triple integration. Of course, as you could see, I'm taking my time to show you the bounds and the graph. Sometimes it's not easy to see the graphs, but you have somehow to know the graph to be able to write the right bounds for the triple integration and see it as type 1, type 2, type 3. Let's get started. Here's the problem again. So mainly it's a volume. We'll get back to the plane in just a minute. It's under the plane and above the region bounded by these two graphs. What is x plus y equals 1? One way to do it in two dimension, think about it as x-intercept and y-intercept, standard form. Or you could write it as slope intercept form, which is y equals 1 minus x. If you do the intercept form, when y equals 0, x will end up 1, that's down below. When x equals 0, y will end up 1, which is up here. That's called the intercept concept. Of course, that's a two dimension. How would you graph this? Well, if you subtract x to the second from both sides, you'll end up with y equals minus x squared plus one, which is a problem. Now, combining those two graphs in the xy plane, because we need the region bounded by these two graphs, we're gonna see it this way. So one way to do it also is going from y1 to y2 and y1 is 1 minus x and y2 is 1 minus x squared. Then at the end, x will go from 0 to 1, will be constants. Uh, that's the concept of which way to go and type 1, type 2 and so on. Of course, you could do it the other way around, but you're going to have to deal with square root. So I think this is a good choice. Let's go back to the plane and how would you graph or imagine how the plane looks like? You don't have to uh, stress yourself and see it as long as you know it's above the region. That means z1 equals 0. And under the plane, that's all what I care. The plane is up, but I need to rewrite it as z equal, z by itself. But it doesn't hurt to practice and see the graph it makes a big difference in complicated problems. So here's one way to graph this plane, which is going to refer to us as the ceiling. That's how I call it. And Z2 equal. Setting the X and Y equal zero. One more time. That's called the concept of intercepts. Having X equals zero and Y equals zero, you end up with Z equals one. And that's what I have for you. Setting the y and the z equals 0, you'll end up with x by itself equals 1. Setting the x and the z equals 0, as you can see, I postponed that till the end. Minus 2y equals 1, that's what you end up with. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, I get that y equals negative half. Uh, as you could see, my lecture videos or with examples, but I do my notes ahead of time, which takes time to make it clean to save you some time from watching. I could do this on the whiteboard, but I tried a few times, it takes longer. So my, my plan is to have clear notes and less time of recording. That's all what I have. Let's see this graph. This is a 3D graph using GeoGebra, which is a free software. It's a plane of this. Crossing the x-axis at 1, right there. That's my x-intercept at 1, 1, 0, 0. Crossing the z-axis at 1 again, and the y-axis back in the negative direction at negative half. 
This is a positive x-axis. This is a positive y-axis. And this is a positive z-axis. So we're going back to the negative y-axis at negative half. It's a plane that is tilted. Of course, it's going to go on top of the first octant or in the first octant above the region that we want as the lower region or the floor. I usually call it floor and ceiling. In math, we call it region D. Here's another view by hand. So we have X, Y, Z extending the Y back. We're going to cross here, here at negative half and here at one. Once you do that, it's going to be tilted coming towards us. Here's another graph with colors to show you the whole thing, except seeing the Z2 plane, which is this one here, tilted. As you can see, I'm not showing that, but there is a plane coming from the back, coming towards us and on top of this region. That's region D that we have as a f uh, the floor down below. And the ceiling will be tilted from the back coming towards us. So paying enough attention to this before we move on. Z, Z uh, one will be zero. That's the floor. Z2 will be the ceiling or the tilted plane, which is Z2. When you solve this for Z, you get Z2, which is 1 minus X plus 2Y by solving for Z. Down below, we're going to go from Y1 down here as 1 minus X all the way to, to Y2, which is 1 minus X squared. And at the end, we're going to go from X equals 0 to x equals 1. This is a typo, it should be negative 1, right there. I'm just thinking once, and I wrote 1 by mistake. It's a negative 1. But the x bound will be from, from 0 to 1. Here's more graphs. You don't need them, but it helps. I'm giving you the link. I will type this in the description below, so you could click on it and see those by yourself. Once you see it in GeoGebra, you could move with the mouse this way. You could move it down and see a top view. Now, this is not 100% top view because I could see the Z is tilted. Because I want you to see it as uh, 3D graphs. Because if I go straight down, you're going to see this as a line. I don't want you to see it as a line. And this right here. I want to show you that it's a 3D graph. So... This is a plane, and this is the bounded region, and I do have the equations next to it. By the way, uh, for your info, RGB, red, green, and blue. That's X and Y and Z to tell you which one is which. One more graph. Enlarged. That's from the top. That's my bounded region down below. And the ceiling, which is the blue plane, as you could see, it's cutting this XY plane and going down as a gray area and above as dark blue, tilted this way. I think that should do it. One more time, I'll leave you the link down below. Here's a summary of what we have. The volume is a triple integral over the region E. The region E is above that bounded region in XYD and below the ceiling, which is to me the tilted plane Z2 equal, the one I mentioned earlier, which is right there. I have Y1 and I have Y2, X from 0 to 1, and Z goes from Z1 equals 0 all the way up to the tilted plane, I keep saying it, Z2 equals 1 minus X plus 2Y. I'm slowing down here and repeating myself because after that it's all calculations. You know, the main idea is you know you need to know how to set up the triple integral with the right bounds, with the right order. Is it type one, type two, type three? If you forget the name, that's not a big deal. You just need to write them in a good order that works and write the right bounds for H, X, and Y, and Z. So here we go. 
This is now the calculations. I have the triple integral and I'm dividing it to three parts for a reason to clean up my notes. That's why I call my videos lecture notes with examples. Here we go. Three colors. The middle one will be Z or the inner one. Once we finish with the bounds from Z1 equals zero to Z2 equals one minus X plus two Y. And of course there's a one here, you don't need it. But the integration of one DZ with respect to Z will be Z. Then we're we'll gonna integrate with respect to Y in black then finally we're going to integrate what we get with respect to x from x10 to x2 equals 1. Here's the z part. Once you get z, you're going to substitute that much for z. Of course, plugging in 0 after that is not going to be worth it. And we're going to end up with this answer. Just plug it in and that's it. Simple. Moving to the second part, that's going to be with respect to y. No need to keep it in red. That's what we have. As simple as that. Don't forget the right bounds. Now, when you integrate, one becomes y, and x, since it's a constant to me, because we are doing it with respect to y, becomes x, y, and 2y becomes 2y to the second over 2, Two cancels and you get y squared. Plugging these expressions into the y's right here, it's time consuming. And that's another reason why I'm not recording on a whiteboard. I could do that and speed up the video as some people do. But if you need this calculations and I could give you the answer right here, but in case if you need the steps, because you're practicing and doing it, I'll give it to you. And here we go. You see how long we're going to integrate, plug in this, square it for the y square, multiply it by x for the y, plug it in as y. Here we're going to subtract and distribute. Before we distribute, we're going to plug in 1 minus x for every single y. Same idea. That will take some time. That will get you uh, 1 minus x square, which is 1 minus 2x plus x square. It's a lot of steps to say and do as I'm recording. But take your time, you could pause the video by hitting the space bar and play by hitting the space bar again. Let's take this to the slide that we were in. x to the 4 plus x to the 3rd minus 5x to the 2nd plus 3x. Here we go. Now that becomes the input for the third integral right here for respect to x. That's an easy one. Plug in 0, 1. x to the 4th becomes x to the 5th over 5, and so on and so on. We know how to do it. Instead of reading it, I'm slowing down so you could see it. Of course, when you plug in 1, that's going to be easy. Plug in 0, all cancels. No need to show that. We need a common denominator, I believe, between 2, 3, 4, and 5 will be 60. So multiplying 5 by 12 is 60. Multiplying 1 by 12, that will end up 12 over 60. And the story continues. Multiplying this by 15, 15. Multiply this by 20, by 20. Multiply here by 30, by 30. To make sure we get 60 everywhere add and subtract with a common denominator and you end up with 17 over 60. i think that should do it you get my idea there is more coming just uh, be patient and i have more and more more examples for calculus 3 and calculus 4 also coming that's my style i call it lecture videos with examples clear notes to show you how I like to keep everything to the best that I can on one slide. That's why I skipped the steps right here in a different slide. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.